All right, well, never wanted this to go publicly, but here we are. If you guys don't know, Manta made a video on dropouts exposing the truth and all the shit we did when he was in the group and how we've snaked him. I watched the video and thought, yeah, you know what? It was pretty funny. It was a pretty funny video. I mean, yeah, no, it was a few good points, but mostly it was complete bullshit. So I felt like I had to do a response video and show my side of the story and you guys can believe who the fuck you want, I guess. I've seen a lot of people say this is marketing and fake. And to be honest, I didn't even know he was being serious when he made that video. Uh, he is serious. It looks like he's serious. And you guys are saying it's marketing for him coming back to drop out. I mean, we can say for a fact that's never going to happen. Uh, and also, I know I said I'm doing misfits and this could be my potential opponent, but I don't even think I can fight this guy because he's generally like four foot 11. It wouldn't be fair. But yeah, enough with the bullshit. Let's get on to this video then. Eh? Let's fucking see what this guy said about us. Yeah, that hairline is gone. <laughs> I thought my shit was bad, bro. Yo, let it go, man. All right, straight away, 22 years old and he's making hairline jokes as an insult yeah i know my hairline shit bro yeah what's this exposing the truth you just had got my hairline bro if you build a youtube empire with a group of boys and you're known all over the uk and you get to 150,000 subscribers and you just hand them over the channel to them on a silver plate you would have thought that they would have been grateful. That's a lie. You left because views weren't banging and you couldn't be asked. You can say your little lies and make excuses, bro, but you know that's the truth. You didn't hand it over to us on a silver plate. We were barely scraping 15,000 views a video. We were at an all-time low and that's all of our fault. We were a group and we all held accountability to that. You left and dumped us at our lowest point. Another thing that never has been mentioned, you wanted to add two more people to the group because you weren't close to me and Ramps as you were to these two that you wanted in. Now, me and Ramiz did not want that. It was a 2v1 decision, and that's how we made the decisions on dropouts, you know? It was a 2v1, so majority voted, and we didn't want them in, and, uh, and that's what we went with. And then, coincidentally, you left right after that. Me and Ramiz had to grind to change the content and grow it back. You were lazy at shoots. We did a crossbar challenge video, which you decided to do, and in the video, you couldn't be asked to do the intro, and you st just stood there like a fucking melon. Welcome to the dropout sport for the Olympic. Come on! Here's how it's gonna work. Yeah. No energy, no enthusiasm, and it just brought the whole mood down. That's what it was like when it were doing dropouts. Manta would basically just sit there and bring the mood down. And when one of us is feeling shit, we all feel shit. And it just, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the same. The energy ain't there. And that's what it was for most of the videos. Me and Ramps, I guess, were closer and we had a better creative mindset than you did. That's why it's worked now. Surely the dropouts respect the things that I've done for them. They respect the fact that I've just handed them over a channel and I walked away from everything. Two years of work for free. But apparently not. Bro, you were so lazy with the work. In lockdown during our rise, you slept and did nothing while me and Ramps were pushing two videos a week on our personal, which grew our personal channels and then grew dropouts from that. Me and Ramiz had exciting video ideas too. We had the abandoned challenge, drive through video, stuck together for 24 hours, and during a content trip, you thought of Discord videos and Amigle, which we never published because it was so boring. You did do some work for dropouts, which I'm not discrediting, and I'll talk about that later, but to say you did all the hard work for the two years you were here and we did nothing is just a straight up lie. They've been chatting shit about me for some unknown... I I still don't know why. Still to this day, I'm confused to what made them want to start chatting shit about me. Like, it makes no sense. But yeah, they made a video chatting shit about me, which I didn't even know about. Because I don't really sit there watching dropouts. The last time I saw one of their videos, they were harassing some underpaid security guards and giggling like little girls and calling it content. Okay, it was just a prank. We get stuff stolen all the time. Yeah. That's out of our wages, so it's not funny. Oh yeah, no, no, it wasn't meant to be funny, actually. It's meant to be like a social experiment. <laughs> I just find it cringe. I feel like I've just outgrown that whole era of things and they're still trying hard to cling on to it. I'm not gonna hate. Now this amazes me. This is so obvious that you're so salty because we're actually doing well. Content is a preference and if content's doing well, we do it again. That's how YouTube works. We know that and you know that. It's our job. The harassing employees comment, you just had to dig at every single prank channel on the internet, so I don't know what the point is there. Even beta school of them at Donald's videos, they do the exact same thing, so it's just a bit of a pointless point, to be honest. You say you've outgrown the pranks, which is fine, but you're clearly lying again because you literally did a bush pranking video um, like two months ago. Stop chatting shit and just admit you're jealous. We're all trying to grind. We're all trying to do our best to entertain the viewers. If you don't like the content, don't watch it. And also, don't do the same videos that you claimed you outgrown when it didn't even bang for you. Silly guy. I don't know how many inches you like that much. I genuinely reckon that you could fit like maybe like a, like a seven inch up there. You think you be fair? You can fit anything up there. It's not about like it might not be pleasant, but I reckon I can get a whole wooden plank. Oh, get on with it, mate. Thing. If you throw anything at me, I'll say- For context, they're talking about fitting dicks up their ass. That, that's, that's the level we're at, still, in 2024. All right, bro, again, don't pretend you don't do the exact same thing. Would you be willing to put a d*** up my ass? 
hypocrite. I went on the dropouts account because he doesn't follow us because he was in a beta squad video and I just I don't I don't follow them because I was in a beta squad video. Alright, okay, okay. This clip here is out of context. This is what I actually said. I went on the dropouts account because he doesn't follow us because he was in a beta squad video and I just wanted to check his story. I was saying I viewed his story because I heard that he was in a beta squad video and I was curious on what it was. I checked his story to see what was happening. I didn't unfollow him because he was in a beta squad video. That that, that just that doesn't even make sense. Stop putting shit out of context, Manta. They're claiming that the whole beef started because I unfollowed them on Instagram or I blocked them because Beta Squad were in my video. Which, by the way, what kind of fucked up logic is that? Let me Again, that's wrong. You know, Manta's twisted narrative there to make it seem like we're jealous. I'll tell you guys what actually happened. All right, so a couple of months ago, I made this video saying that the dropouts wouldn't let me join them, which was clearly a joke, right? An important thing, they went along with the joke. We went along with it because he said it was going to kickstart his channel. I thought that it was pretty sad that he, uh, he left the group and to kickstart his channel and get views, he needed to make a video about us. He needs to create some fake beef to get views views but you know we're, we're friends at the end of the day do whatever you need to do to get views but at the same time i am thinking this is pretty low bro i can't lie you left the group to make your own content and since then four of your last seven videos have been about us and two on the beta squad since then you've only done one video on your main and that video is basically you saying you're going on a break like what is going on he also did two other videos which he deleted because they didn't bang views this is where the saltiness makes sense but yeah anyway to sell the little fake beef i had to unfollow them on instagram to, to play the part you know, we have beef. Now, important thing, I messaged them saying I'm going to unfollow them temporarily for the video. I don't really know the exact words that I said, but the screenshots right here, I literally said I'm going to unfollow you for a bit. Now, this again is a lie. The message, yeah, calm, was me agreeing to a script 10 days after Manta unfollowed and blocked us and also after the video. It was not agreeing to the plan of what was going on. Now, I have proof from this. Manta uploaded the video saying we kicked him out and won't let him in dropouts and also saying we unfollowed him on the 19th of August. We knew nothing about this. Fans were DMing us and commenting that we're dickheads and pricks. It wasn't until later that night he messaged the old group chat saying what was going on. We were calm here I guess but in my opinion what he did there was just snaky and immature. He should have told us to see if we're calm with it and if you know if he did like if he did love us like he says and, he, and if we were friends then you know you tell us before you do this and not just paint us out like pricks without letting us know. Again it all falls into the saltiness of trying to take us down. So no we never agreed to this. We were forced to agree with it because we wanted to let you guys know that it was all scripted and a lie. Since you've given your opinion about our content, I can say that that was pretty shit content in my opinion. And extremely sad considering you left the group over a year ago. I was pissed off at him for that and so I didn't follow him back. Simple as that. In this video, they're making it seem like I just unfollowed them and blocked them out of nowhere because, because I made a video with a beta squad. What kind of fucking logic is that? What a shit lie, by the way. It's just a shit lie, innit? Well, no, no one actually said that. You've cut out half of what I said, as I explained before. And also, as I said and proved with text messages, you literally did unfollow us and block us out of nowhere. Are you actually okay, bro? Like, it amazes me how you generally don't remember your own actions. If you're gonna lie about me, make up something impressive. Say that I touch kids or some shit. <laughs> Ooh, you unfollowed me. So they're starting off strong with a lie. Good job. Good job, lads. Well, this is funny because now we know that you've lied and we haven't. You seriously didn't think that I would pick this up on you. With message receipts to prove as well. So fucking stupid. Joel sat there trying to discredit the work that I've done for dropouts behind the scenes. He's basically saying I didn't really do anything for dropouts behind the scenes. I was just sleeping all day. I was being lazy. And he's trying to act like he did it all himself. He's the big man. Yeah, but that just... He, was, he says that he'd done all the hard work. The thing like, is, we're not even... Really lockdown, all you did was sleep and do no videos and do nothing. Which again is a blatant lie. And I'm just pissed at the fact that he's discrediting the fucking hard work I put in. Well, that's easy to say, man, to isn't it? Let's say that I did all the work behind the scenes because I don't need to show proof for that. That's why he said it. Make me and Ramps look like the bad guys now. Now, I'm not saying Manta did no work behind the scenes. He did, he helped out with the merch. But again, all us three had our inputs on that. It wasn't just him. The truth is during lockdown, you had such an amazing opportunity to grow your channel, but you didn't. We kept telling you and sending you these Zoom calls to join so you you could make a video but you didn't you were just lazy and saw me and ramps putting out this content and getting subscribers which would benefit you because of the dropouts channel and you knew this because it was split between the three of us even when it was your week to edit you would be lazy with that too you'd be late with the upload or get me and ramps to do it the truth is manta me and ramps did do the work to get the subscribers which got you paid and that's that i don't want to be the arrogant guy that's like oh i did so much for you da -da -da -da. but the fact is this guy sitting here trying to discredit my work now i have to be like that the thing is i understand why i did it right it's 
it's an easy thing to lie about. A lot of the fans didn't really see the work that I put behind the scenes on dropouts. They obviously saw Rams and Joe uploading consistently and me not uploading. So in their head, they probably thought that, you know, I wasn't really doing anything. And Joe here just jumped on the opportunity to lie about me not doing anything. But that's what happened. I'm simply not lying. The only thing that I can say to prove my point is that if you did all the work behind the scenes, why hasn't it worked for you now on your own channel? You're still using us to get views, just like in lockdown and when you were part of the group. Why do you publicly lie about me and act like I haven't done anything for dropouts and you guys? You want to act like you did it all yourself and I didn't do anything. I was being lazy. But privately, you want to sit there messaging me, thanking me for the amount of things that I've done for dropouts and you guys. And if it wasn't for me, you guys wouldn't be where you are because you had no idea what you were doing on YouTube. Okay, so this message here was me trying to patch things up after we saw the video when we were chatting shit about him, which he aired, by the way, a month ago. So it's clear that he's made this all public just to gain a bit of views. When I say it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have started to grow is about when I first met Manta, even before I was in dropouts. Now I'm going to admit this guy helped me. He taught me about thumbnails and descriptions and titles, how to post a video on YouTube in 2020 and cater for the algorithm. And to this day, I've always said this. I thank you so much. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten out of the hole that I was in. I was stuck making 2016 YouTube videos in 2020 and he helped me get out of that. That's what I meant. However, when it came to dropouts, he wasn't the person who made us grow. And that's a fact, bro. And if that was truly the case, if I really did nothing for dropouts, why did a guy sit there in a podcast a couple of months ago saying I was the backbone and the business mind of dropouts? Manta was like the backbone, you could say. He was behind the scenes, business, did all that shit. He was very smart, knew the algorithm and stuff like that. See, the math isn't really adding up, is it? It's, it's not making sense. That's yeah, I said you did stuff behind the scenes. You helped with the merch and the algorithm when we started the group. We were on good terms there, mate. We didn't want to tell everyone that you were lazy when it came to the growth of the channel. But now you've tried to manipulate the viewers and twist shit, I'm going to say the truth now. And OG fans will know back in the day we used to make jokes about Manta being so lazy, you know? You OG fans will know that those jokes, they, just, they didn't come from nowhere, you know? He was genuinely lazy. Snowy Joe, you ungrateful piece of shit. You narrow-faced, mouth-breathing horse. You could probably bite an apple through the letterbox. There we go. It's big age of 22, 23. He's calling me a horse in an exposing truth video. I, it just shows he's really got nothing to say that's factual. All right, I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm about to hurt your feelings. I know you're watching this right now. The only reason you're in dropout is purely because of the fact that we needed a third member. You're not special, or you might be a little bit, I'll be honest, but that's the only reason you're in dropouts. You brought nothing to the table. You had no clout. You had no knowledge about how YouTube worked. You weren't exceptionally funny. You brought nothing to the table. And despite all of that, we added you to dropouts purely because we needed a third member. Okay, you know what else is funny, Manta? I knew that because you told me. However, that's not the only thing you said, was it? We did two videos together before I joined. Would I lie to you and a question type challenge video? We then, Manta, did a video on your channel, Extreme Dead which never got uploaded because you were too lazy to edit. On that Discord call, you said you wanted me to join Dropouts because of those two videos that we did and the Dares video because the chemistry was there, the energy was there, and I was good in front of the camera. You said that I was a funny guy and that my editing was good, as shown in the two videos that we did together that I edited and thought of. So I don't know why you're lying for, but it's irrelevant anyway because adding me wasn't a negative because we grew from that. And also, if you really loved this group that you made, why would you just add me because you needed someone else? Why didn't you add some random fan. What you said there is pure bullshit and doesn't make sense. You're just trying to make me feel sad. And guess what? It hasn't worked. So every single week, I would host dropouts meetings. And these meetings were so important for the growth of dropouts. These meetings were the reasons why we move away from making Discord videos to in real life videos. There were so many things that we figured out in these meetings that was vital for the growth of dropouts. And you know how these meetings would go? They would come in, yeah? sit down on Discord, wait for me to say something. And every single week, I had to come through with bullet points or notes or topics to talk about because these guys just, they didn't have anything to talk about. Like, I had to orchestrate the whole thing, otherwise there'd be no meetings and we wouldn't fucking grow on dropout. And that's just a lie again. The meetings we all contributed to. Manta, you did set dates, I guess. I mean, yeah, well done for that. But again, saying we can't win nothing is just a straight up lie. When I hit 100k subscribers after being in the beta squad video, right? Shout out fucking Chunks and AJ, by the way. I didn't get a single congrats from them. And bear in mind, after the whole fake beef was done, Joe and Ram still didn't follow me back. But Joe would type up my Instagram username every single day to view all my stories, but he couldn't send me a single congrats. After everything that I did for him, he can't send me a single congrats, bro. I'd change that guy's life. Yeah, I felt a certain way about it. I definitely did feel a certain way about it. I felt disrespected. I didn't feel backstabbed. That, that's a fucking understatement, bro. I've always had your back and you guys can't send me a single congratulations. That's some bullshit, bro. So this point here, he's right. I should have congratulated him. It's a big milestone and I'm sorry if you're hurt by that. At this point, I was still pissed about the video where you're petting us out dickheads and we 
we weren't really speaking. We weren't following one another and we weren't really on good terms, I thought. I checked your story one day because I was curious and heard your Innovator Squad video. I was happy for you. Me and Ramps, we genuinely were. So I'm sorry for that. I should have given you a message. Joe says, I'm jealous that they're doing better than me. Like, I'm, I'm jealous of the dropouts. And I'm kind of confused. Are you wants to talk about numbers? Let's talk about numbers. When I was in dropouts, we went from barely any subscribers to over 100,000 within two years. And to put that into perspective, that's the same amount of time frame that has been since I left dropouts. Despite me leaving dropouts when you guys are already at 150,000 subscribers, I gave you guys the channel when we already had a platform. And in two years, you guys have gained just about over 70,000 subscribers. That's it. And you guys are banging the same amount of views as we did back in the lockdown days when I was there. Two whole years, bro. Right, okay, here we go. Now, this is the bit that gets a little bit juicy. You gave us the platform with 150,000 subscribers, which majority of those came from ramps mostly and me. Nothing from you because you didn't upload. Back then, we would post on our personal channels and then our fans would see that we got a group channel and come from our personals. Mostly ramps, I admit that. He fucking blew up in lockdown. So don't say you gave us the platform at 150k like you were the main cause for that. You helped, but you weren't the main cause. You did the least. To go from a trio doing challenge type videos to two people, it, it doesn't work. We had to fully change the content and the style to make it work for a duo channel. We had to invest a lot because we had no cameraman, we had no fans because what we were doing at the time it, it didn't work out in the end we were barely scraping 15,000 views a video you left and me and ramps grinded to make it work we have gained nearly 80,000 subscribers since you left a year and a half ago with totally different videos and pretty much a whole new audience we've grown our tiktok to 160,000 followers we have a patreon with over 400 members we have a second channel which we just started and it's getting more views than your main we have released a clothing line we have a bigger team we have a fucking dropout house the videos you picked up on on your video were the most recent ones. If you look back at last year, the views are much better than what we had at our growth. Our revenue is much better because we've changed our content from the edgy and dark humor jokes to reach a wider audience. Our new style videos are getting more royalty views and they're constantly growing, which is leading to more views a month than what we ever had before. Dropouts has never been better. And I think that we can prove that from A, our house and B, when we did a meetup in Southampton and over 200 fans turned up. With you, we did a meetup six people turned up. You're comparing a growth spike to a steady viewer base. And as an algorithmic genius, as you say you are, you know that after your growth, you plateau. And even in our plateau now, we're doing a thousand times better than our growth. And me and Ramps are fucking proud that work because you left and we had to change it when we could have done it together. But you gave up because like I said, you weren't as close to me and Ramps as you were to these other two you wanted in the group. So don't discredit the work that me and Ramps have done and don't twist and manipulate the viewers to thinking that we're doing shit. We've grinded since the start of 20 2021. And it's hard to keep a YouTube career in this day and age, but we've done it for three years. And it's only going to get bigger because we're not lazy and have the fucking mindset. Joe, let's talk about your personal channel. Your personal channel does less views than one of my side channels, bro. Lil Fried is one of my side channels that I've been working on recently, and it's outdoing your main channel. Alright, I mean, I don't like posting my main because I prefer growing dropouts, and it's more fun to film with my best mates. I'm proud of you, bro, for finally posting on a channel. Why didn't you do that in the first place, though? Because we wouldn't be where we are now, would we? Also, so I was never flexing my numbers. I only flex my numbers now because you were trying to discredit the work that me and Ramps are putting. All I said was, you're just jealous because we're doing well. Sorry for saying that, bro, but I think that's the truth considering you've made a full 18 minute video just saying complete lies just to get a few views when even our second channel got more views when we posted it at the same time. I mean, come on, bro. It's very obvious you are jealous because you wouldn't be doing this right now. You wouldn't be using us for views in four of your last seven videos after you left. If I was still in dropouts, we would have had millions of subscribers by now. I mean, yeah, we could have, but you left me. Everything happens for a reason. Me and Ramps had to totally change the channel and I think we've done it fucking well considering we were scraping 15,000 views a video when you were in it last. I left dropouts to work for some billionaires. I made a shit ton of money and then I came back and I started doing YouTube automation, which is how I make my money. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just blowing up different YouTube channels and making your money through there, which I'm fucking good at and I've been doing my whole life. This is why dropouts fucking blew up. It's not how dropouts blew up. It was me and Ramps grinding. It always has been. Stop saying it was you because it just wasn't. And instead of 33% each, it's 50% each. So it's yeah. much so more motivating. You know? you know what I mean? Bro, like after everything that I did for these guys, these guys just saw me as a percentage. That actually fucking hurt me, bro. Oh no, we don't. You can clearly tell by my facial expressions and tone that that was clearly a joke, you fucking moron. I even messaged you saying that, which you aired. There was this American YouTuber with barely any testosterone in his system. He made a video on Joe for some dumb shit that he did. You know, calling out Joe and saying this guy's been stupid and Joel was getting thousands and thousands of messages and DMs saying some fucked up shit and getting
getting hate, right? Initially, I didn't really think that the hate was getting to him, but one day on Discord, he told me that the, you know, the hate was kind of getting on his nerves and shit, and he just didn't like it, which is understandable when you're getting thousands and thousands of comments. So what did I do? Me being a loyal fucking friend, without hesitation, I made a video on Nick is not green, trying to take the attention away from Joe and redirect it towards myself. And it worked. Nick is not green made a video about me and I was getting a shit ton of hate. Way more than I thought I would. Now, I don't have a humiliation fetish. I didn't do that for fun. I don't enjoy being hated on. The only reason I did that was to take away the attention from Joe and I was literally standing in the fucking line of fire. I did that out of loyalty, bro. That's the love I had for these boys. I saw them as my family. We went- You're acting like I never thanked you for that and I, I ignored the whole situation. This was two years ago. Don't bring it up now like we haven't had talks about it. I respected Madness so much for this and he's acting like we didn't do shit for him. Like, oh, I don't know, carrying his channel for three years. Because we wanted him to grow. He was our boy. Even when Nick was beefing Manta, instead I stepped in and I backed him. This is how we've ended up. Fucking sad, man. Yeah, it is sad. If you never just dumped us with a dead channel at the time, if you never told the fans that we kicked you out and didn't want you back, then this wouldn't have happened. You even copied our merch. Like, it, it's, it's just sad, bro. You claim to have left to do your own thing, but since then, you haven't stopped talking about us. I never wanted this to go publicly. Uh, I didn't even know we had beef, but what he said about calling us sly and painting us out like dickheads and damaging the dropouts brand, I don't fuck with that. You guys deserve to know the truth. And, you know, I, I've proved to you with text messages and shit and uh i mean the rest is waffle from him this is just my side of the story so you can believe who the fuck you want you're probably thinking why ramps isn't really contributing this he doesn't give a fuck when it's just complete bullshit to be honest uh he's not the type of guy to defend himself when he knows that it's all lies pretty much so i'm different to that i don't like getting painted out in a in a fake narrative basically uh you guys deserve the, the truth and now you have the truth uh i don't want to do any more videos on this i don't even want to address this anymore uh but we'll see what happens see what manta does uh if he says more shit that lies then i will have to defend that but i don't want to i don't want to do this this is so boring to me to be honest i don't really give a fuck internet drama is so dead and boring uh anyway see you on dropouts day friday uh yeah also dropoutsclothing.com uh which uh, you know, we get 50% now and no fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke again. Ah, oh, fuck this.